Right, hello everyone. I hope everyone can hear me. My name is Birgit and I will be leading this webinar today. Um, I've got with me Pablo from our um, molecular interaction team. He will monitor the chat, so if you've got any questions, just put them in the chat. Okay, so I mainly curate for the complex portal, but also work for Intact and we are one team all together. You can always contact me on the email address I have here. Um, I've got a website up there and also our Twitter um, accounts. So just to start um, with the background, <clears throat> because complexes are essentially um, the biologically functional units of protein-protein interactions that are experimentally um, um, identified. So protein-protein interactions, um, there we go. Um, <clears throat> so protein-protein interactions are physical and selective contacts that happen between pairs of proteins and these happen in certain molecular regions and in a defined biological context. And at the simplest um, level, this is protein A binds protein B. And then these can be combined, so you can take loads and loads of interaction evidences and build up an interaction network, which is the graphical representation of all these interactions. And in this network, all the nodes are the proteins or other molecules and then the edges are the interactions that have been um, identified. And in the context of complexes, we can use these interaction networks to reconstruct com complexes by using individual interaction evidences. And this is an example of the human proteasome. Um, all our complexes are manually curated, and these are the databases that we use to draw our experimental data from. So there's Intact and other IMEX um, consortium databases like DIP and Matrix DB here on the left hand side. Um, they will store the primary protein protein interaction data. We also get interaction data from the Uniprot curations. Um, from crystal structures in the PDB, we have evidences from Kembo, from Reactome, and we, will <coughs> and we also um, draw data from the Saccharomyces genome database. And all our complexes are annotated with gene ontology terms, and we provide data back to the gene ontology. So as I mentioned, it's all based on um, publications, but for most complexes, the data is in more than one publication. So I have to read a lot of different sources in order to get the overview of what this complex is and what it does. Um, <clears throat> the way we create it is we take the publications, we use controlled vocabularies and the manual so that every curator that curates into the complex portal uses um, the same protocols. Um, we make the annotations in our editorial tool and then once we've put it in the database, it gets checked by a second curator. So all entries are double checked to reduce the amount of human error to a minimum and also to provide us with um, feedback internally and sometimes we need to discuss how we actually deal with certain complex complexes. And once the um, second curator has accepted the um, entry, it goes out in our roughly monthly release, releases. Um, you can find our data and we'll see it uh, in detail later uh, on our website, on the FTP side. We have a web service and it also goes out to other databases. All our data is freely accessible, it's manually curated, and it contains macromolecular complexes. Okay, so what are complexes? They're the stable set of two or more interacting molecules, and they have to be co-purified, and they have to have a um, demonstrated function in the cell. We capture more than just proteins, we also capture small molecules and nucleic acids as long as they're an integral part of the complex. What we don't <coughs> capture are simple enzyme substrate or receptor ligand interactions unless one of those elements is a complex in its own right. So an en multi subunit enzyme of course is a complex and will be curated. And the second exception is when this complex 
doesn't form unless the enzyme is bound to the substrate or the receptor has actually got a ligand um, attached to it. The first example here is the maltose transporter, which requires the maltose to bind to the hollow enzyme. And here the um, PDB entries. So in this case, we have the core subunit of the maltose transporter with two um, membrane domains and two ATPase domains. Um, but this is non-functional. We need the maltose transporter protein, and that does not bind the, the um, core complex unless the maltose is bound to the maltose binding protein. So here we have the substrate of this complex as part of it. The second example is the platelet-derived growth factor, which is a classical enzyme, uh, sorry, a classical membrane receptor. And here the actual receptor molecules don't bind unless the dimer is already bound to the receptor. Um, this, is the, this is a cartoon of the cytoplasmic side of the crystal structure. And as you can see, in this case, the two receptor molecules don't have any protein-protein interactions. They're bound by this ligand, and the ligand itself is the dimer. So in fact, in the database, we have two entries. We have one for the ligand, because it exists on its own in the extracellular space. And then we have the whole complex, the tetramere. Um, the other main thing we don't curate are simple pull-down or co-immunoprecipitation co experiments that have no functional links. So large-scale protein-protein interaction data does not count as experimental evidence in this case. Um, but a lot of the time, the complex evidence is slightly more complicated to retrieve. And what we use is the evidence code ontology to provide, provide the user with um, the details of where we actually have the, where the data came from. So for those where the whole complex has been shown <coughs> to exist in one experiment, we use this existing code of physical interaction evidence used in manual assertion. And that was a code that was already available in the ontology. Um, for all other use cases, we had to create new codes, and they're all part of this branch of biological systems reconstruction evidence. Um, I should say the evidence code ontology can be found at the EBI ontology lookup service. Um, within this new branch, it, <clears throat> we have three different types of evidences. So I'll start with the bottom one here. <clears throat> So in some cases, we have experimental evidence, but it doesn't come from a single experiment from one species. It could either be a single experiment, but from mixed species, because um, a lot of the time people use a library, for example, from one organism and screen against something else, or they just have certain plasmids <coughs> in the freezer. And if the sequences are almost identical, then we assume that this complex forms in the in each of those species. So we use the evidence from that mixed species um, experiment. Similarly, sometimes complexes are not shown in one single experiments, <coughs> experiment, but we have to use one or two, uh, two or three sources to um, reconstruct these um, complexes. And then we use um, this code here. The other thing we decided to do was, um, in the first place, that for all complexes that we create for human, we also want to make the ortholog for mouse and vice versa. And for that, we had to then use codes that tell the user that this is curated based on experimental evidence in another species. And that's this block up here. So we have a branch for homology evidence, and that's split into the orthology evidence for um, inferring from, so for example, human to mouse. But we also have the pyrology evidence, and this is in cases where a complex exists, but the membership of some of the subunits might be unclear or is interchangeable because the gene products might be based on pyrologous genes or isoforms. And then we curate all the different variants and in the species, and as long as at least one of those um, specific variants has got experimental evidence, 
then we infer the rest by pyrology. And the, the third case for inferring um, evidence for complexes is this one here. And so in this case, we actually infer the evidence of the complexes based on our background scientific knowledge. And this is for cases where there's no proper protein-protein interaction evidence available, and, um, but the community believes these complexes exist. And this is either in cases where the protein-protein interaction evidence is, um, can only be reconstructed for many, many binaries, so large-scale yeast to hybrid or co op experiment, or where other evidence like um, pharmacological evidence for ligand binding um, characteristics is used. So in uh, many membrane receptors, we find that the only evidence for protein composite, for complex composition is based on these ligand binding assays. Um, because these complexes are very valuable, they're often drug targets and they're found in other databases such like Kemble. Um, we've introduced this code and so we do curate, uh, oops, sorry. We do curate um, complexes without protein protein interaction evidence and use this code for it. So that's everything about the evidence and um, you will see some examples later. This is an overview of the species coverage. Um, the complex portal is still a very young database and we focused on model organisms. So you can see that the numbers for human, mouse, Saccharomyces and E. coli are much larger than um, the rest. We've got quite a few rat uh, complexes now as well. Um, some of the other mammalian species are curated because the experimental evidence was done in, for example, a cow cell line or a rabbit um, tissue. And then we use those to infer biology to human or mouse. Um, we will also, as the next release, have the first lot of Arabidopsis and um, zebra fish complexes. So, so they're coming out very soon. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the website. It's very easy to use and I'll be doing a demo in just a couple of slides time. The way to search for it is just um, using the search bar and you, use, you can use any kind of identifiers, names or synonyms for the complexes or the containing molecules. And we can also search with cross references to the complexes, so say a complex was um, curated in the PDB crystal um, structure database, you could use that code and search whether we have an entry for that complex here. You can search by species and you can also search by ontology terms. And I will show you examples of all of those. Um, and for, for some of them, the examples here right on the website. If you do a search for wild types, so asterisk search, you get the list of all complexes. And here you can see that we can then filter um, we can filter the results either based on the species here, based on the biological role. Mainly these are roles related to enzyme complexes or um, uh, donor and um, receptor um, members of a complex. And the third type of um, filter is for the interactor type. So you can find complexes that, for example, contain RNAs or small molecules. Okay, so I'm going to switch over live now. I've just given you a list of complexes that we'll be looking at. Um, if you go back, if you going back to this later on the website, then you can use these um, codes again. Okay. So this is the front page, the home page of the complex portal. I just showed you the screenshot for it. You can see on the side we have our Twitter feed. You can just sign up there. You can also sign up to the newsletter. Um, an easy search is done through the box here, or what I'm doing, I'll just use this example here, which is the hemoglobin complex. You can see we search for a specific identifier, so we have a very limited range of filters available. OK. 
apply. So on the <clears throat> each complex entry, entry has a unique um, recommended name, which is the name the complex is mainly known as in the literature. Everything is species specific, and we also give you the NCBI um, taxon ID. Here on the right hand side, you can see that this complex has got first gill interaction evidence, and you can and it's stored in the Intact database. So clicking on this link opens up the Intact evidence or the evidence in Intact. And that little flask um, is either half full if the inference is by um, homology or empty if it's one of those complexes that we've had to infer. The list of members of the complex is found in this table together with the legend for the viewer. So <coughs> um, circles are proteins and um, small molecules are triangles. This viewer can be moved and I'll come back to it in a moment. So all the elements are movable. All right, the last thing you can see in the table is the stoichiometry. So it clearly defines the two alpha and the two beta chains of the um, uh, of the complex and the four um, heme molecules. Every complex has an, a manually annotated functional statement, very much like uh, Uniprod does. And it dis basically describes what it does and where it does it. Um, we also annotate everything to the gene ontology molecular function biological process. And these are uh, annotations that are specific to the complex. We do not import the individual gene product annotations because a lot of the time proteins are found in more than one complex and their function is specific to the complex. Um, they're found in. If a list is longer than five, and this is applicable for the whole website, more than five elements you need to click on show all. Okay, further we show you the evidence for uh, its involvement in pathways. This data is taken from the reactome database. The table up here is slightly difficult to read um, and it will be <clears throat> redeveloped very soon. Um, Underneath, you can see the snapshot from the uh, from Reactor, and this is the widget that Reactor provides, um, and any resource can reuse this. Here, it highlights the complex um, with the Reactor given name and the reaction. You can click <clears throat> here, and you can see what the reaction name is. If you select a different complex, it then rebuilds the page. And the picture uh, zooms into the complex and the reaction with this complex is in here in a different pathway. You can also um, toggle through the different pathways. Sometimes the same complex is available in more than one pathway. This little box tells you exactly where you are at the moment. If you want to see the reactome details further, you click on this um, reactome logo down here, and that takes you to the reactome website. Um, we have another free text annotation field where we define the properties a little bit more. This is not mandatory and might be missing in certain complexes, but in this case, it has more information on how the cofactors of the um, hemoglobin function also contains the estimated molecular weight. Um, it might have other um, features such like uh, such as assemble um, processes for the complex. We provide you with a controlled vocabulary for the assembly terms. Assembly terms are here. It's a heterotetramer. As far as we know, the stoichiometry. Again, here's another lovely widget we've taken from the PDBE database. Um, this is the light mold viewer for crystal structures. Um, and you can toggle through this. So if you open up the second um, molecule here, you can see clearly the four chains and the four heme molecules inside each of the hemoglobin chains. 
again, if you want to see more about data about this, you click on the PDB link, uh, which takes you to the PDB website, PDB website. We also capture the um, gene expression data through the um, heat map that's provided by expression at, by the expression atlas. Again, <clears throat> you get the list of tissues where um, the genes were expressed and um, how strongly they're expressed. So it's all very interactive. You can see all the data and you have the list of genes here. If you want to see the data in the expression atlas, you click on the link up here. Uh, we also annotate all complexes to the gauss cellular compartment class. Um, it will have at least a term from the complex class, um, but we've also started to capture the cellular locations such as nucleus, or cytosol, or plasma membrane. So for some complexes, there are more terms displayed here. For those complexes that have been impl implicated in diseases, we list them in this pathology section here. <clears throat> um, it's just the disease name, the code uh, from the um, parent database, and a short description, and then the um, clickable hyperlinks and the table below. These all connect to the uh, evidence, no, the experimental factor ontology, but the EFO has um, decided to keep the original term name. So you often find orphanet terms or human phenotype um, ontology terms. Lastly, for the hemoglobin, we also link out to Kemba, pro, um, to Kemba for complexes that drug targets. And then you get a list of um, PubMed identifiers that we use to create this complex or, whoops, or um, further information like a good review or functional paper for the complex and a list of synonyms and the systematic name. The systematic name is a concatenation of the gene symbols, including the stoichiometry. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of other complexes and so you can see how the, um, the page adjusts um, based on the sort of data that's available. Before I do that, I'm going to click on the basket icon here. And you can see how the number up here in the basket changes. So you can actually save complexes within your session. And you can also download them in JSON format here. Other formats are available um, in a different place, which I'll come to later. <clears throat> so the second complex I'm going to show you is an integrin. I've made a note of the identifier. And what I wanted to point out in here is, so it's again one with experimental evidence. And <clears throat> it's got the same sort of sections here. But it also has a link to the EMDB. So for those complexes where there's data from um, electromicroscopy um, experiments, we capture that as well. Further, we capture links to the uh, matrix DB database for extracellular um, component, extracellular matrix um, complexes. Otherwise, this has got very similar sections. Um, okay. So we touched on the viewer, and I don't know if anyone already clicked on it while I was talking. Feel free to have a go. I'm going to use yet another complex that has a nicer, um, more features. That's sheltering. So you see in sheltering, the list of um, protein members is longer than five. So I'm going to click on here. So you've got six different proteins, two of which occur twice. So this whole thing is a um, heterooctoma. <clears throat> As I already mentioned, you can move all of these um, icon, um, elements around just by holding the left mouse button and clicking with the mouse. You can then click on one. You can see the binding features between these individual proteins. 
And if you hold the mouse over it, you can see exactly the start and end point. Yes. Okay, um, Emmanuel, I've seen your question. I'm going to have to come back to that. I don't have the numbers in my head. We do capture stoichiometry for everything we can def definitively say we know the stoichiometry. But there are many, many complexes where we don't know the stoichiometry because the experimental data just isn't there. If you want a number, I can get it to you later. Um, Okay, so to come back to these binding features, if you hover over um, the bar of the protein, you can see the start and end point of the feature, and if you hover over the edge, you can see it for both ends of the feature. You can open all of them in one go and see exactly what we know. So cases where the binding edge goes to position zero are where we know that these two members interact but we just don't know where the actual binding sites are. Um, further if you hold the um, mouse over the bar and you hold the shift key and then keep clicking you can zoom in to the amino acid sequence. So here we can see exactly the sequence of the binding region for um, TERF2 to TINF2 and for um, TERF1 to TINF2. If you've clicked around and done lots of manipulations, you can always go back to collapse all and that refreshes your view and you bring everything back together. You can export your diagram as SVG and then reuse in your um, presentations or publications. There are a couple of other um, features that you, we can use for the proteins. We can identify some Uniprod features. Um, ah, yeah, there's a small bug at the moment that's not working. Um, there was an update that hasn't filtered through yet, but it should show you certain Uniprod features. You can see the superfamilies, and you can actually, if I expand it in this beautiful example, see how the superfamilies for the superfamily domains often pretty much overlap the binding regions. So you can see a lot of biological detail here. And lastly, for large complexes, uh, might be quite useful. You can just color in the unique participants and see where the identical um, participants are and which ones are unique. Um, I don't know if there are any more questions about the uh, viewer. Yes? Okay. I'm just going to read the right feature of mutation data. Yes, so we have a lot of mutation data in the INTAG database. Um, I don't know if Pablo can paste the link into it. Yeah, Pablo will paste the link to the mutation data in Intact. We are currently working on deciding how to display and overlay this on the complexes, and we're working on an alternative view, which is one of those circular core diagrams, and that would be much nicer for large complexes with lots of binding features and would then also give us the opportunity to overlay other features on the outside of this. So, do watch this space, it is coming and it's coming soon. Are there any other questions? Yes, the download is coming. You're ahead of me. <laughs> um, so I just want to show you one more example. Let's search by name. Say, so, oops, uh, telomerase. Okay, so I want the human telomerase and I'm looking at the core complex. Here you can see we also capture RNA members. In this case, it's very simple. It's the TURG protein together with the TURG RNA. And this is the link out to um, RNA central for the RNA. You will see some complexes that have less features annotated. So for example, our PCNA example here. Um, just waiting for this to build. So what we know about it, it's a homotrimer, but we don't know where the binding regions are. So sometimes you have this empty bag of proteins with just the members on the sort of blue turquoise background. 
The last type of search I'd like to demonstrate is a gene ontology search. So we have an example here. It's for the um, redox complexes. If we just use the top um, search. So this was a list of, so I've gone through quite quickly, you get the list of all complexes. With, with a Go search, you get the list of all complexes um, that have been annotated to that Go term or any of its children, and that includes the part of children. So you could search for nucle the Go term for nucleus, and you get all nucleola um, or nuclear prote uh, protein complexes. Um, in this case, it's a redox complex, and you can see here the um, activity that was captured. So it's one of these activities that's captured as a child of um, redox complex. And also you can see how we have only partial interaction evidence for this particular example. Right, there were a few questions which will be answered now. If we go back to the home page. You'll have seen there's a block of tiles here that give you further functionality. First one is the quick and easy organism search. So click on here and that gives you the, the pictures of the um, pictograms of all the organisms that we capture. Um, which one was the organism in question, Pablo? Tick. 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 Oh, we, don't so have any we don't have any tick <laughs> complexes, sorry. <laughs> Not yet. We're always happy for other people to curate for us, by the way. Um, so for humans, for example, you click on it and now you have all 608 human complexes listed and then you can filter further. Um, the second option was the, um, the basket. So we put something in the basket earlier and when you click on the basket on the front tile or you click on the basket icon on the top here, you get the list of complexes that we've put in the basket. At the moment, there's no further functionality. We're working on the download um, option here. Just need to wrangle the data in the back at the back end a little. Yes, next question. Drosophila, yes, we do have some Drosophila complexes. They were on the list, yeah. yeah unfortunately, it's not one of our high targets and we don't have a Drosophila curator. Uh, so there are just a few that were done um, as a proof of concept. So the last <coughs> bit I want to point out from the front page here is the programmatic access. So how do you actually get this data? Um, essentially you have three options. You can download the Howl MX XML file. We do still provide the 2.5, but we recommend that you use the 3.0 format because it captures more detail about the complexes. The 3.0 format was in part specifically designed to um, capture these specific complex details. Um, clicking on this takes you through to the FTP site. For the biologist who needs a quick overview, we have the complex tab, which is a tab delimita delimitated file. and um, it's organized by species. So if you click on it, again, it's the FTP site, and you see you get one folder per species and one file. We have one file per species. Um, and the last one is the JSON format, which takes you to the web service. Um, this is the JSON format itself is used as an import for the viewer as well. Any, nope, okay, so no questions to answer at the moment. Complex tab includes the stoichiometry. Complex tab includes the stoichiometry, yes. Complex tab is one line per complex with all the participants pipe separated, um, and that includes the stoichiometry in pipe separated format. Oh, this is the last one, I almost forgot. If you can't find your complex, but you would like to use it as part of your analysis pipeline, click on this button, which takes you through to the web form. Send us a message. We might ask you for more information, then we'll do our best to curate it and get it out with one of the following releases. Okay.
So there was a question about the complex location. Yes, that's captured through the um, cellular location, cellular compartment go annotation. So either it's a separate annotation to the location or the go complex term is directly linked with a part of, um, yes, part of relationship to that location. Um, we can just have a quick look in the quick go and grab the, an example. Okay. So if we use the nucleus term, that will now capture all the complexes that have been annotated to a nuclear location. And, oh. Um, now we haven't integrated the quorum data directly um, because they use in part different ontologies and controlled vocabularies um, to the ones we use. We use the, um, the Go ontology and the PSI ontology and also, um, as I mentioned, uh, the Eco ontology for evidence. So we couldn't simply integrate it. We've also got added value on ours. We've got more manual annotations and more cross-references on our complexes than Quorum has. So there's only a couple more things on the slides I wanted to show at this point. So just for to recap, for those of you who want to use the data programmatically, you can access it by FTP uh, in XML and tab format and um, access our REST API. If you want to contact us, you can request the complex via the yellow button. You can report bugs um, through our feedback um, button if you have a GitHub account. If you don't have a GitHub account, just use the request complex um, form because it just goes to a help desk anyway and send us any comments. Please sign up to the newsletter to get all the updates that are coming, especially um, things like new download formats and options, uh, and follow us on Twitter where all releases are being retweeted. We also have features like um, complex of the month, um, so at this point I'd like to thank everyone who's worked on the complex portal in the last few years and all our collaborators. This uh, project is funded internally by EBI Ember funding and the complex viewer is a BBS, BBSRC com, uh, project in collaboration with the University of Edinburgh and University of Cambridge. So if no one's got any more questions then I'd like to thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, just either email us on the intact um, email address or directly on my email address. Uh, we're always here to help. We, um, we like to collaborate with people. So if you've got any particular use cases you would like us to look at, um, we'd be very open to, to work with you. All right, thank you very much and big thank you to Pablo for uh, monitoring the chat and Melissa for recording it and um, putting it up online soon.